Welcome to AFRICOM TV here at the 20th anniversary event. We're very happy to have with us today Mr. Herman Singh, who's the Group Chief Digital Officer at MTM. Welcome, Mr. Mrs. Singh. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. It's great to be here. Thank you. Wonderful. So uh, we, we're here on day one. You took part in the keynotes. Uh, what has been the highlight for you so far? The energy level is amazing, obviously. Um, it's, I think it's, it's, been, it's been amazing how this year we've been very realistic. We, uh, there's been a lot of hype in, in previous years. This year we're kind of sitting back going, well, we haven't achieved as much as we should have. Uh, it's clearly harder. There's a lot of hefty, heavy lifting to be done. How are we practically going to make it happen? Right. So you're referencing the Visions for African keynotes, which took place this morning. Uh, the session was entitled Mapping Africa's Journey Towards the Fourth Industrial Revolution. Quite an aspirational panel discussion. What do you think the, the fourth industrial revolution means for Africa? It's, it's really Africa's opportunity to lift itself up by its own bootstraps. It's using technology to raise the GDP of Africa from $1,000 a year to five to $10,000 a year. Uh, and, and the question, of course, is, well, how are we going to do that? And fundamentally, it's about three things. It's about how do we create more access to the internet uh, to people? How do we, for people who are not going to get it for, for five years, how do we give them an alternative to the internet that also helps them enjoy the benefits of the digital revolution? And then once you've got access, how are we going to give them the services that they need? And finally, given the capacity constraints in Africa, how are we going to do this with the limited amount of money we have so that we've got an asset light solution? Wonderful. And I just wanted to, to reference what you were talking about before about so much change in the industry and things. So how do you think Africa is going to capitalize or has been capitalizing on disruptive technologies and innovation? So, Africa is an amazing uh, uh, place. It's, it's probably the most creative place in the world. And I, I like to think of it as innovating with constraints. When you don't have the capital and you don't have the infrastructure, you've got to be really creative about how you get more out of less. And so in, in Africa, we've seen things like education using USSD systems or tests on SMSs and banking using feature phones with no branches, no ATMs and no point of sale machines. So I think Africa's solving customer needs using very simple and very basic technology. I think we're going to see a lot of that going forward. So let's talk mobile. How have you seen mobile transform the digital economy in Africa? I think if, if you track the contribution it's made, in countries where MTN is present, for example, we are typically 2 to 3% of GDP of those countries. That's the first thing is just, you know, the voice data business is a big chunk of the economy anyway. Then when you look at what people are doing on their phones, the new services, it's clear that mobile money has had a big impact. But what people never talk about are all the adjacent businesses. We're starting to see insurance products, savings, lending, uh, changing the world. Because uh, Africans are now able to borrow and use credit to uplift their lives. Most of us take it for granted, but in the rest of Africa, borrowing is a hard problem. And we've been able to crack that now. Uh, I think you're also starting to find media take on a much bigger role. So music, gaming, and video becoming far more of, 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 a, of, a, of a consumption item. And then, of course, education, medical, agri, and government beginning to pull their weight as well. And the combination of this is creating a digital economy and a digital lifestyle, the, the, a form of which we've never seen before, and really changing the nature of Africa fundamentally. Let's have a look at what MTN are doing in this space. So as, uh, as somebody who's, who's really in the forefront of digital strategy, how are you aligning your strategy to meet Industry 4.0 here in Africa? So we, we, we have a number of strategies. Let's go back to the point I made earlier that the point number one is you've got to give people access. And access means giving them access to connectivity, number one, and number two, devices that can physically you know, get onto the internet. So we're looking at ways of rolling out our radio access networks, getting to 3G and 4G faster. Uh, whether we've got voice, we need data. That's the first challenge, and, wherever we, and where we can't get there with typical GSM technology, how can we make use of satellites, for example, to get connectivity in rural areas? That's, that's challenge number one. Challenge number two is only one, one in every four of our customers has access to a smartphone. And only half of those with access to a smartphone actually have a data bundle attached. In other words, the, the, the accessible market is actually quite limited. So part of what we want to do is to educate customers on what to do with their handsets, how to get data bundles attached, and of course to get more internet-enabled phones in the hands of, of customers. That's, just, that's kind of the, the pillar number one. We've got to find ways of doing that. We've got to find ways of lowering the cost of getting data, cheaper bundles, lower bundles, zero rating certain services. That's step number one. Step number two then is we're working very hard to build new services for customers. And there are three things that people want to use the internet for. They want to buy physical things, 
They want to get access to services, which are intangible, and then they want to get access to digital products. It might be music, video, or gaming, or education, but these are products that can be sent to someone over the internet. And so we are building these vertical product stacks so that customers have access to them. Because the challenge in Africa is, it's no use Googling, because if you go and Google it, you're going to find someone who can't deliver it. So the question is, I've got Spotify, but Spotify is too expensive because it's $9 a month, and the data is expensive. Mm -hmm. So we need a local solution. In the same way, there's no use going to shop at Amazon, because how is Amazon going to deliver to you if you're in Abuja? So what we've got to do is build a capability that's Africa-centric. Wonderful. And we're very Africa-centric here. We're celebrating 20 years of African tech and telecommunications development. So we've looked back in the last 20. What are your aspirations and hopes for the next 20? Next 20? Well, I think we're going to see a completely digitized, co connected Africa. But I think you're going to find that Africa is going to be very asset light. We're going to find a way to deliver amazing services to people who are living on one, two, or three thousand dollars a month. And these are going to be lightweight services, very cheap services, and I think it's going to form a model for how to build simple services for the world. So I think you're going to find we're going to export a lot of what we're doing here into places like India and South America where they have the same problems like, like us. And I'd like to see much more of this kind of innovation happening. I'm already seeing it in the medical in space where we are finding ways to get doctor on call available to people you know, in, in all sorts of, of areas, where, remote areas, where they never had access to doctors before. MTN is now pioneering the ability to deliver off-grid photovoltaic solar on a prepaid basis to people who are in rural areas. So that's giving them access to power to charge phones, to get access to electricity, to power fridges. Let's not forget that a very large proportion of children in Africa die from preventable di diseases because the vaccines that they need can't be kept cold. This is just another example of the things we'd like to see more of in, in Africa. These really innovative, really creative things. Imagine getting access to electricity without a national grid and without a power station. Imagine that vision. Maybe the whole world should look like this. And I think these really amazing ideas are going to come out of Africa and in time may actually be pervasive in the rest of the world, just like we saw happen with mobile money. Wonderful. Thank you so much for sharing your thoughts and insight with us, Mr. Singh. Uh, have a good rest of the, your uh, AfricaCom 2017. Thank you. Same to you. Thank you.